Father, who fulfills the word, may the resurrection of Christ become my resurrection exactly in my life. That resurrection where you won over death, may it become my resurrection exactly. And may this be a resurrection where we are victorious to Satan. May we be victorious to disasters and curses. Whatever difficulty, disease, may we be resurrected. May we receive blessings of becoming a witness. This incredible blessing, may we pass it down to our children. And that love and power of the resurrection, may we live as patriots to our country and our people for world peace. May we be able to handle this work and with the strength of the resurrection, may we be able to, to handle this work and by this mystery of God, mystery of Christ, four-step repentance. May we receive all the promises of his love. We believe those blessings will overflow. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. You and I, the resurrection of Christ. If it's just an event, then it's useless. Whatever we do, if it's just the ceremony or the formality, if you just have it as an event, then this resurrection has nothing to do with me. The resurrection of Christ is the mystery of God, the mystery of Christ. And so, if you want to preach the gospel, you should only speak the mystery of Christ. Colossians chapter 4, verse 3. So, do you have confidence to go to heaven? Do you have the assurance of eternal life? Without this mystery, it doesn't work. The resurrection of Christ, if it doesn't become mine, you do not have the assurance of salvation. So, is it just salvation that we're receiving? To receive freedom from disasters and curses, whatever demon cannot harm us, we have this freedom and disease, from disease to go to health, something that doesn't do well to do well, to receive freedom and happiness. That is my resurrection. So may this resurrection become mine. Why is it that Jesus took on all that suffering? What you, I, our descendants had to bear, he fulfilled this mystery. Let's make that fulfilled mystery mine and to fix my destiny. It's not for us to gather and, ha you know, have some, celebrate some event. So let's all receive this promise today. So what's wrong that we cannot receive? That's what we have to realize. Romans chapter 6, verse 9. Let's find that. Romans chapter 6, verse 9. So later, if you look at verse 4, it talks about baptism. It's when we die by Christ and we live by Christ. That is baptism. So that is four-step repentance. In three days, at the third step, we live and we get up. And then the last quarter, if we give thanks, then that is the mystery. Let's read together. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over him. Amen. So you and I, we, we're most afraid of dying. Why? Because you're going to hell. But if the resurrection of Christ, if it becomes mine, because we go, we're going to heaven, death has no hold over us. So Christ is the resurrection. He's the resurrection of our life. So John chapter 19, verse 30, it says, He fulfilled everything. 
So if he's fulfilled everything, why can't you find joy? You can't say amen. You're tied up to demons. Those people who are not doing well, they can't say amen. That means that someone who hasn't done four step repentance, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. So you say you've done four step repentance. You're a demon. That person can't smile. They have no thanksgiving. They always have excuses, grumblings. What are these excuses and grumblings? That's someone who is foolish, who hasn't repented. Someone who doesn't repent, who is, who is foolish, they ruin their own lives. This resurrection should become mine. But because they don't do this, they ruin their own life. And the sign that they've ruined it is that they make excuses and they grumble and they complain. That's Proverbs chapter 19, verse 3. So someone who sits there not saying amen, don't, don't be close to that person. They are truly wicked. They're double-minded. They're someone who ruins themselves. If you have anything to do with them, then you'll ruin your life. That person always has grumblings and excuses. They they do they don't have thanksgiving. So one Corinthians chapter ten verse ten, someone who grumbles, I'll kill them myself. So who made it like that? They did. So if you don't want to become like that, you have to do this mystery, four step repentance. You say you have? That's a lie. So what is this time? the resurrection where he's fulfilled everything to make this blessing mine for me and my children to live this is the father's promise I am the resurrection is this our man I've won over death may we all receive this so Romans chapter 6 verse 4 so we'll leave the baptism and we'll look at verse 9 knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead is never to die again. Death no longer is master over him. In the world, they're most afraid of dying. You know, they go to hospital and they, you know, go crazy. And as they live, if it's good for your flesh, whether it be males or females, you know, they'll chop a cobra's head to drink the blood. If it's good for you, then... They say a bear's paw doesn't freeze on the ice. So, you know, what about a duck? You know, when they sit on the ice, they don't freeze either. So we might as well eat them all. And a lot of people do eat duck. But all sorts of things they look at. You know, that's the way God made it. Those people whose lungs aren't good, the if they look at the lotus roots, then, you know, they have holes in them. So if you're not learned, you look at that and it's like, oh, oh, you eat that and your lungs do become better. So he's made it so that we see and we realize. People seem as if they're so good, but when did they make parachutes? Well, they looked at the dandelion seeds flying. So if anything, you know, what they do is they just look at the 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 grass in the field and learn from that. But why do we have so many religions? In order to win over death. What is death? Inside of death is disease and disasters and curses, all sorts of bad things. And in the end, you go to hell. So the way to win over this is Christ. Let's live properly. The resurrection of Christ is not an event. It's not to gather and, you know, just because you talk about the Holy Communion or you talk about the resurrection, does it become mine? You have to obey the mystery of Christ exactly. That's when my conscience is revived. When I live, the the curses and the demons are cast out. My children do well. More and more we do well and become patriots. This is the blessing we've come to receive. So for the resurrection to become mine. And so when we preach the gospel, we have to speak the mystery of Christ. Colossians chapter 4 verse 3. But, you know, these people, they they say they're evangelizing or doing mission work, and yet they don't speak the mystery of Christ. We have to pay attention. So, so we have to be resurrected. Our spirit has to do well for us to have eternal life, t- salvation. So let's read together. Matthew chapter 28, verse 6. So this word... You have to believe it. 
for it to work. But if you don't believe, that is sin. John chapter 16, verse 9. So Jesus' is, you know, resurrection, it doesn't make sense. I can't believe it. That's why you're a sinner. Because you're a sinner, if you can't believe, then what do you have to do to believe? You have to do the mystery of Christ and do four step repentance. Then God will give you the gift of faith. He gives it to you inside of Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. So you have to believe. But, you know, if people say, just believe, you know, there are records of the judgment, people still don't believe. Even though people who were living at that time didn't believe. So how do you believe? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. You have to receive the gift of faith from God to believe. So how is it that you can receive this gift of faith? So Matthew chapter 28, verse 6. Let's read it. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. Amen. So, you know why it's verse 6? Well, if we want to talk about that, it's going to take time, so we'll just leave that. You know, people talk about how they've read the four Gospels and they know. Stop talking. Beast talk. Some people say, oh, I've read the four Gospels for 10 years whilst doing forced repentance. I ask them one question and they're, and they're bowing on the floor. So, why say that you know? So Jesus has risen again. He's resurrected. We say that, but you ask where it is in Matthew and you don't know. What about Mark? Mark is also in the last chapter. That's also in verse 6. If you don't believe this, it's sin. John chapter 16, verse 9. If you don't believe, it's sin. But I, but I can't believe. So you have to go in Christ and receive the gift of faith. That, so, forced at repentance, the resurrection has to happen inside of me. So, if you receive the gift of faith by forced at repentance, then it happens according to your faith. So you fix your destiny. That's what resurrection is. It will happen according to your faith. It will happen according to your desires. So your destiny is fixed. Is this our man? This is why we're here. So the last chapter, chapter 16, verse 6. So Matthew was also verse 6 too. Why? Why is it all in verse 6? The word. So the most important wisdom lies in the in the address of understanding. Why is it all verse 6? But then you get tied up to that and you start thinking, oh, why is that? That's curses. That's outside of Christ. If you repent, if God gives it to you, that's when knowledge comes. If you're like, oh, why is that? You look at these fakes. They do all, their, all these things with their heads. They don't have Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is one quarter. But some people just do... 0.5 so of the quarter. So this is why you don't do well. So with God's word, you have to obey exactly. But because of your head, these thoughts. So I give you a hint that it's verse 6, and now you're like, oh, what is that? You know, is it 666? We're talking about the resurrection of, of Jesus Christ. So let's read verse 6. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who has been crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, here is the place where they laid him. Amen. So, is he alive or dead? So, what verse is this? Isn't it strange? Why is it the same as Matthew? So, Luke, what's the last chapter of Luke? Well, it's chapter 24. Well, again, look at verse 6. This is strange. So don't go outside of Christ. You know, I wasn't going to do this today, and yet God's giving it. You know, someone who said they were doing forced repentance for many years. Well, if, you're, if you've done forced repentance for many years, you at least have to know the four Gospels. What, is, what are the four Gospels? It's Jesus Christ, and yet he didn't know anything. And he, and so he says he's not doing well. You have to know to do well. If you don't know, are you humble or are you proud? You're proud. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. 
So he acts as if he's humble. Oh, I've done four-step repentance for 10 years. I asked him about the Bible. He didn't know even one thing. How can that be humility? That's being proud. God will oppose you. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. If you're proud, you've ruined your whole life. And then all you do is grumble and complain. So one grandmother, she came to me. She boiled one potato. That's what God is pleased with. If you obey according to what he works in your heart. But these riffraff, they they just do whatever they please. They don't follow those workings. And so that's why outside of Christ, it's curses. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Why is it that you don't do well? It's me that's done the things not to do well. Let's read verse 6, Luke chapter 24, verse 6. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee? Amen. So, he has risen. It's happened exactly. So, Matthew, Mark, Luke, it's all in verse 6. Well, what about John? Well, John chapter 21 is an incredible promise, but in chapter 20, it talks about the resurrection from verse 1. So let's look at John chapter 20, verse 9. So here, why is it verse 9? Don't do this with your head. If you don't know, then repent and receive it. That is going the right way. You have to know that your repentance is lacking that you have demons, that you're filthy, you don't even know the basics of the four gospels. That's what you have to realize. Don't act as if you know. Don't say, oh, why am I not doing well? So if you want to go to heaven, if you want eternal life, John chapter 17, verse 3, you have to know Jesus Christ. But you don't know. If you don't know the mystery of Christ, how can you receive salvation? Where does it say in the Bible? So if you don't know, if you don't know Christ, then your soul will be taken to hell. Colossians chapter two verse eight. That's where you've attended all this, you've gone all this time, and that's why you don't do well. That's why the European Church now, after two thousand years, they're empty because they didn't have the mystery of Christ. But He's made it so that we can do well. He's made it so His resurrection can become mine. So let's not have this taken away. Let's not lose this, this resurrection becoming mine. How precious is this promise? Verse 9, let's read it. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that He must rise again from the dead. Amen. So what does it say here? Is he dead or is he alive? He's alive. So they have to see that then. So verse 19, let's read that. Let's see if they see it or not. So when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Amen. Did they see him or not? He appeared. So if he's resurrected, he should appear. And what is it that he gave? So peace and health, all good things he wants us to receive. He says, peace be with you. This is such an amazing blessing. But if you don't believe this, then it is sin. John chapter 16, verse 9. So we have to believe, but I can't. So because you can't believe, you it's by the mystery of Christ that you can. Let's find 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. So how blessed is this time? Oh, Pastor, before, on, on, on Easter Sunday, you'd say other things. Well, because you haven't read this, you know, it says he's resurrected. But I ask you, you don't know where it is in Matthew or where, it is, it, where is it in Mark. You don't know. It's, they're all in verse 6. So isn't this strange? Why in John has it become verse 9? You still don't understand. Why? Why is it that you don't receive realizations? Because you haven't repented. You repent one little drop, one little grain, and then you ask for blessings that are as big as the ocean. 
When hasn't God given you blessings? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15, he's put the blessings in front of you, an inexhaustible amount. But you, you only do like one little needle drops worth. You know, the the eye of a needle is so big. If you become as small as powder, you know, hundreds of pieces can go through that needle eye. Everything you do by your strength is disasters and curses. It's continuously trials. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9. So that's what you've made it to be. So what is it that God doesn't give? He gives you unlimitedly. He can give you greater things than a camel. How can that go inside the eye of a needle? Well, if you become smaller than a powder, then you can. So it's because you don't know how to repent. That's why you say these wrong things. There's nothing as wide as the eel. E- the eye of a needle. If you put one piece of powder through there, do you know how much space there is around it? So, if you have repented by the mystery of Christ, if you're baptized, then you're dead. You're smaller than a powder. But because you haven't died, it's because of your head. You have demons. You have all evil. What is this elementary knowledge of the world, your PhDs? Let's not be mistaken. Let's read. Let's read again. John. Also, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 21, about faith. So, it's by Christ that we have faith. Let's read it. Who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Amen. So how can we believe the Holy Trinity? It says, by Christ. It's by Christ. So Christ. So Luke chapter 24, let's go back. Verse 6. Christ has risen. So how many days? Well, it doesn't say in verse 6, three days, but in verse 7. So so what is this verse 6 and 7? So chapter 24, verse 6 and 7, let's read it together. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Amen. So let's just read verse 6 again. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee? Amen. So, have you remembered that I'm going to live again? And that's going to be in three days. In three days, I'll be resurrected. So, God doesn't want us to just just celebrate an event. He who has created all of creation, because we disobeyed, because we betrayed, if it was you and I, we'd be like, what, you betrayed something this good? Be cursed. But still, He loved us. And so he made it happen again, and he fulfilled the will of God. That is Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7 to 9. Why? Because he wants to give us blessings again. So he came as Jesus Christ. Is our side Jesus Christ? Or so which, which, so is our side Christ or God's side? But many publications, they talk about Jesus being on our side. That means what? God has to repent. So God's saying, you want to do well, don't you? You want to live from your death, don't you? Because of our sins and our ancestors' sins, are we alive or dead? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. We're dead. We want to live, don't we? So if a dead person attends church, if they're a pastor or elder, does that mean they live? The way to live is that Christ was risen after the third day. That's that's how we live. Let's read Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. Let's find that. So by baptism, we die and we live by Christ. So what is Christ? He's resurrected in three days. Why is it that you don't do well? Because you can't say amen, you're a demon. How can you do well? 
Oh, but I can't say I'm in. That's why you're tied up to demons. If you have your ancestors' demons, can you realize the Bible or not? Do you really know that you cannot realize? You cannot realize. That's John chapter 8, verse 44. So if you, because you cannot realize the Bible, you can't say I'm in. If you can't realize, how can you say I'm in? So that person, who is that person? That's someone who denies that Jesus is the Christ. 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. So according to the Bible, that is the Antichrist. So those who don't do four step repentance, they're all Antichrist. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, that is heresy. Why? Because it doesn't work. But with the mystery of Christ, it works. So you've come to fix your destiny, not to hear the story about Jesus being resurrected. If you go to a restaurant, you eat what's right for you to actually eat the food, not to view other people eating. Stop doing those stupid things. And so God says it's not the hearers that are righteous, it's those who hear and change them to actions that are righteous. Romans chapter 2 verse 13. So the resurrection of Christ, you who so aren't doing well, it's to make you do well. Those who are on their way to hell, those who, who are under death, to receive eternal life, to receive freedom from those demons. Why is it that your children don't listen? Because of their demons, their ancestors' demons. That's why they don't attend church. That's why they don't want to believe. Then by what? You know, one of the pastors was saying, amongst his his congregation after doing four-step repentance for for many years their son who was acting like they're so good they, that son changed and said mother i'm going to i'm going to help you as much as i can and so he was testifying about this what about you you pretend to do four-step repentance and always you're tied up to your thoughts you know, you don't do that quarter of Thanksgiving and you go outside of Christ with these thoughts, those thoughts. So it's you that makes yourself not do well. You have to do four-step repentance to receive the gift of faith because it's given in Christ. It's by Christ that we believe. We read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. So what is Christ? It's you dying in baptism. Let's read verse 12 having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised up with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Amen. So we die with Christ and we live with Christ. That is baptism. So it's to die and to live. So how do we live by Christ? Well, it's in three days we're resurrected. So you have to do four-step repentance. So why is it three days instead of four? Well, he was resurrected in three days. But that last, that last quarter, we have to give thanksgiving to go to heaven, to receive salvation, to give glory to God. Let's find Psalms chapter 50, verse 23. Psalms chapter 50, verse 23. So, it's not some, you know, Easter event. You know, people come to our church because they don't do four-step repentance properly. The resurrection has nothing to do with me. So, those people who are doing well, they do well. But those people who aren't doing well, they don't do well. Their children don't do well. You look at those people who don't do well. They always think about what's good for them. Your flesh is your enemy. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. But to always please your flesh, to sleep when you want to sleep, you know, putting on your blankets because you're cold. It's either one or the other. You love your flesh or you love God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. You cannot love two things. Pastor Park, because I don't know what it feels like to be cold, do you think that's why I do that? I know that I'm cold. And so you don't fall asleep. So what do I do? It's the week of suffering. Even norm, you know, in normal times you should do that. If Pastor Park is is fake in fr front of you, where do I drag you all? To hell. Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. So how if I stand in front of the state so shamelessly, wow, that would be really good, wouldn't it? How could that be right according to the word? So if you eat that, so if you eat this, then you have to do that. If you love your flesh, then you're an enemy of God. But you please your flesh, and then how can you expect to do well? What happens if I die? 
God says to give up your life. That's the commandment. But does he kill you? He saves you. But because you scheme, you never give up your life. Those people who don't do well, they're all lukewarm. What, my life? Well, even if you get disadvantaged with your name, you won't do it. So how can God bless that evil? You need to pay attention. Why is it that Christ's resurrection doesn't become mine? What have you done? What are you doing in front of God? Pastor Park, if I've done this much, you know, then maybe I should go, you know, then I should sleep and do all those things. But, but why is it that, that I'm cold? Because if you're cold, you end up, you know, you end up um, crouching. So what happens if you crouch? You end up praying. So do you think I'll end up falling asleep and snoring? You don't love God. You don't love God and then you say you're not doing well. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. He only makes you do as well as you... He only gives you as much as you love. So there's no other difference. If you have repented according to the mystery of Christ, if you have repented, then what is dead becomes alive. You know, when something is so good, do you say you're cold or you're hungry? Let's let's go back to our past. If you're with your someone that you love, you know your your boyfriend or girlfriend, do you say, "Oh, I'm so cold." You know, if someone says, "Are you cold?" No, I'm okay. Oh, are you are you hungry? No, no, I'm okay. You know, you you lie. You know, you don't say, but then in front of God, what you should do, you don't do. Why is it that I become cold so that I can't sleep? So that's how I'll pray. That's how I'll, I'll re realize my sin a quarter. So you want to receive a ton of gold. And yet, a quarter of a quarter where you're supposed to realize your sin, you're not even you're not even repenting of you know zero point five of that of that ton. You know how can you expect to receive answers? So you have to at least do five thousand verses, but you can't do that. You know, even for pastors, it may not happen. So Proverbs 13, verse 20, you have to go to where there is the sermon of the wise. If you hear the sermon of the wise, then that wisdom comes to you. So this is the blessing you want to receive. That's why we go to the wise. So that's why you have to go to the right place. So go to where there is the wisdom, the sermon of wisdom. Otherwise, if you go to the foolish, you'll only be harmed. So this lacking servant, you know, according to this word, that's what I'm doing. So a quarter, we realize. But is that is that all? No, we have to ask God for forgiveness. So you ask God for forgiveness well. You do that quarter well. So Isaiah chapter 43, verse 24. Because you've asked for forgiveness, for tormenting me, he forgives you. But then every time I sin, my heart, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 1, I shred up my heart. So if you repent that with the blood of Christ, then that gets forgiven too. But after that, you have to do a quarter of thanksgiving properly. But you're like, oh, hold on, I've got something urgent to use this for. God knows. So, you know, I've given thanks in the past, so he'll, he knows. So you make this excuse, that excuse. So instead of a quarter of thanksgiving, you only do 0.5 of that. And so it doesn't work. You see if you've given thanks properly. Ah, uh, how? How can I give this small thing to pasta? It's just this one potato. You know, if it was two maybe, but... You know, or then you add two or three, or or you, you're embarrassed, you know, bring it at all. And so you just... You just cast away the thanksgiving. So you have these workings in your heart. And let's say you're eating Korean pancakes and you're like, oh, suddenly, oh, I should give half to the pastor. But you don't, you don't, you don't bring it. When God gives you these workings in your heart for thanksgiving, you have to do it exactly. 
So when you do that, have a new experience, miraculous working. So you do that a bit, you've experienced that a bit, but then you become proud and, and arrogant, and then you don't do it properly. Why is it that the resurrection of Christ doesn't become mine? Why don't you have the assurance of salvation? Why don't you have boldness? Why don't you have joy? Because you haven't done it properly. So if you don't do it properly, why come here? So at this time, you coming in front of God is so that His resurrection becomes mine. So in three days, Christ was resurrected. That is the mystery of Christ. So we have to make this mine. So what have we found? Psalms chapter 50, verse 23. So not giving thanks properly, that means you don't even have salvation. Let's read together. He who offers the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, and to him who orders his way aright, I shall show the salvation of God. Amen. So what am I like? Am I giving worship with thanksgiving? You look at those people who don't do well. They say, that, you know, their, their lives are so difficult, but they spend all that they need to on themselves and their children, and yet they have nothing for God, even though they've received from God. And then they say, oh, I'm not doing well. Why is it that this resurrection isn't happening for you? After three days, yes, you've, you've, you've become alive and you've risen, but you don't give thanksgiving properly. You don't stamp that, that contract. So then it's not recognized at our church. Those people who don't give thanksgiving, who give this excuse, that excuses, they receive disasters and curses. Their family's a mess. More, if you wait and see, their household is, is destroyed. Their children become a mess. So you're doing that. That person always has excuses. You ask that person. You exhort that person. They don't have thanksgiving. So you and I, why is it that his resurrection doesn't become mine? Why is it that my disease isn't being healed? Why is it that my disasters and curses don't become blessings? So if your, if your spirit does well, then you go to heaven. Everything does well. Why isn't this happening? Because there's something wrong with me. What, what is my wrong? So you've heard the sermon of the wise. Why is it that you're not doing well? So if you hear the Sermon of the Wise, it should work. But that last step of thanksgiving, how have you done it? Let's pay attention. We have to sacrifice with thanksgiving properly to receive salvation of our souls. How? What have I done? You say, it's mine, so I'm going to do whatever I please. Try it. If you do whatever you please as if it's yours, when I see the, how, how you give thanksgiving, I can see that you'll be struck by lightning. Straight away, you can see. That person makes excuses. They grumble. So who is it that's ruined their own way? They have. Let's find Proverbs chapter 19, verse 3. So straight away, if you love your spouse, then he'll kill your spouse. If it's your child, then more and more your children become problematic. You, you receive that and yet you don't know. I'm someone who's eaten up my child. And I'm saying, please don't do that. The father, if you earn money without repenting, he'll kill you. Because you have to give it to the righteous. If you try to use it, he'll kill you. So what kind of person am I? What about my parents? What are the people around me like? Why is it that the resurrection of Christ, you, it's become just an event that we pass by? It's because we don't have this mystery. And even if we know this mystery, we don't do it properly. So that's why you're suffering. Today, let's end it. From today, let's do well. Let's fix our destiny. Let's pass blessings to our children. Is this amen? So where is it that you, have, you gather and you think that this resurrection will work? Anywhere, anytime. You know, is it just once a year that this resurrection happens? 
You know, resurrection is fixing my destiny anytime, anywhere, anyone. Let's make this promise blessing mine. May I do well and save my children. Let's be patriots to our country. The world wants peace. It's someone who is closed by his pleasure, by doing forced at repentance. You know, they talk about this or that. No, it doesn't work. God's word, it happens exactly. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. My word will be fulfilled exactly. What is prophecy? It's according to the word. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. Let's read together. The foolishness of man ruins his way, and his heart rages against Jehovah. Amen. So someone who is foolish, Psalms 107, verse 7, is someone who suffers because of their sin, because they don't repent, they don't do forced repentance, the mystery of Christ. So they they ruin their own lives. They make their, their, their lives crooked. So if you don't do well, it's you that's ruined it. Your ancestors have ruined it. So what should we do? All we have to do is repent. But you don't repent. And so you have disease, your, di- your business is ruined, your family's ruined. <coughs> so it's you that's ruined it, and then you end up grumbling. So someone who grumbles, are they a good person or a bad person? They are the worst. They ruined everything, and then they grumble. And they end, end up grumbling against God. So that is a filthy demon. Who is as good as God? He created everything and gave it to us. And we betrayed and we departed. Well then, you know, instead of saying, oh, well, you go off. But still, he gave us Jesus Christ. And in three days, so that we can be resurrected. So that it's not hard for us. You know, tormenting him and then to- and then scarring our hearts by the blood of Christ to get rid of that. So Ephesians chapter 4, verse 33, it's because of sin that we suffer and we have demons and disasters. With what are we forgiven? Let's find Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. It's only in Christ that we're forgiven. It's only by forced at repentance. So what is it that you're suffering from? Now that we realize it's me that's done it. I've ruined my life. My ancestors have ruined my life. So now we feel a bit ashamed, don't we? But you shouldn't be ashamed. Someone who is like a child doesn't feel shame. I too fall so quickly. I keep falling and falling. Even coming up here. even though I prayed all night long you know and I said no I'm not going to drink anything you know you know remembering him but then I came up and I drank something so you know you're the same as soon as you want to stand you fall as soon as you start to live you fall because you don't give thanks but you know you have to give thanks and at least move around before you fall you know, this it's like this corpse trying to get up, you know, not being able to leave that funeral cask. Okay, let's not laugh, let's live. Death, depart. Disasters and curses, depart. We have to live. Is this our man? So the resurrection of Christ is mine. So what are you suffering from? Today, let's end it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Amen. So where are our sins forgiven? In Christ, by the mystery of Christ, four step repentance. If we're forgiven of our sins, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 to 3, then God helps us. Our destiny is fixed. So it's because of sin and the demons that stick to the sin that we don't do well. Re- the resurrection is for us to do well, it's for our desires to be granted, it's to go to heaven and receive eternal life. So let's find 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55. It's all 555, like like the river stones of, of David. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55. 
So death, what is it that you've won over? By the resurrection of Christ, it's all finished. But why is it that you're slaves to that and you're not doing well? Today, let's be released. Today, let's be released. So, we have to be released. We have to fix our destiny. What you say, what's not working out? God's fulfilled everything. What is it that's not working out? It's because I'm not obeying. But the biggest problem, you don't go to hear the wisdom of the wise. You say, oh, I had nowhere else to go, so I went to, to that place. What, to go to hell? That doesn't make sense. Let's do well. Let's live. What have we found? Verse 55. What we're most afraid of on this earth. You know, as we, as we live a life of faith, what is it that we're most afraid of? Going to hell. But if our spirit does well, everything does well, we receive health. 3 John verse 2. So we're most afraid of death, but how do we win over it? Let's read together. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Amen. So death curses. You acted like you were so great. But have you won over the resurrection of Christ? No, you've lost. So, with the, with the resurrection of Christ, it wins over death. May the resurrection of Christ become mine. Let's win over disasters and curses. Let's receive eternal life. Let's pass blessings to our children. That's why we're here, to receive these blessings. And that is full step repentance. So God, he says, only speak this. Let's find Colossians chapter 4, verse 3. This is mission work. This is evangelizing the gospel. Colossians chapter 4, verse 3. Let's read it. For this is praying at the same time for us as well that God will open up to us a door for the word so that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ for which I have also been in prison. So he tells us to speak the mystery of Christ. But where where do they speak the mystery of Christ? You know, these days, now they're barely talking about Christ. If you've talked about Christ and you have to speak the mystery of Christ, You know, they've cursed so much and yet now they have to go that way. It's like pooing and then having to sit on that. But still, they can be forgiven. Still, you can do well. So the resurrection of Christ. So this word, whose food is it? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. It's my food. So if this resurrection has is mine, then I have to do well. But first of all, we haven't listened to the Sermon of the Wise. If we have listened, why is it that we don't do well? Because of the last step, we don't give thanks. So the Holy Spirit, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, when he works in your heart, have you given thanks according to that? Sometimes, if my repentance is so little, sometimes he makes me do something that is so embarrassing, but you still have to do it. So on a rainy day, so I was standing there and I was drenched in rain and a deacon walking past um, was offered me an umbrella and he told me not to accept it. So I look like a drowned rat. So in the world, that would be baptism. So in front of us, where that bus, bus stop is, there's, there's a Western confectionery stop. And he told me to go there. And I stood in front of there and he told me to go in. I'm completely drenched. And inside this bakery, you know, even they looked at me like, where, sh where should I sit? So the lady was about 50, 60. And then I too, God told me to sit in the corner near the door. So, you know, I'm drenched and I'm sitting on the chair. The chair's become completely soaked. And God, he tells me, he gives me workings in my heart to just order one piece of bread. You know, how good would it be if I ordered a lot? But the cheapest one, which is the bean paste one, 
you know, how it might would have been better if I ordered an expensive one. So she's like, which bread? And I said, the bean paste one. And she's like, one? And I said, yes. And so I've ordered that and she's come with it. And she, and she, and she like, she's flicking the plate at me like I'm a dog. And so, the, you know, <coughs> excuse me, the bread's moving around on the plate. And she says, should I give you something to drink? You know, if I ordered milk or maybe an expensive, you know, soft drink. And, and he tells me to drink water. So you have to obey this. So because I obeyed, miracles happened in that place. The son's leg, which was broken, was healed. So it was for these workings. If I'd eaten a lot and then I healed that son's leg, she, you know, she probably, inside of her, she'd probably thought, oh, you know, because I healed that leg. You know, people of the world, they only know money. So if I'd eaten 10 expensive things and then I healed the, the son's leg, she couldn't have said, I'll oh, pay up. So, you know, they stood out on the street and they're all bowing to me. So in the world, people only know money because they're evil. So what kind of person am I? Have you given thanks properly? Have you obeyed properly? It's by sacrifice of thanksgiving that we give glory to God, honor to God, and that we, we do well, our children do well. Today our desires will be fulfilled. May we all receive this. Is this amen? Let's all pray. Truly good God, by this mystery of Christ, a quarter to realize our sins by the law. The law takes us to Christ, Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. So we obeyed that and we came to Christ. And it's by the blood of Christ that we ask God for forgiveness. Anyone in Christ, God forgives their sins. So that's what you said in verse 32. So may we all receive those promised blessings and be forgiven by God. And our hearts, we've shredded it up by the blood of Christ. Inside of Christ, make us new, without a past, a blessed person. And we thank you that you've given us this new start. So, after doing that, if we don't give thanksgiving properly, it seems like it do, we do well and then we don't. Now that we've realized, Lord, may we obey, may we be a sheep and give thanks so that I live, my children live, and to cast out those disasters and curses, Satan, the darkness be cast out. May we be patriots to our country. So may this resurrection all become mine. And each family, may we overflow with thanksgiving and praise. Let's receive this resurrection. We will do more well. May death depart. May our disasters and curses be cast out and out lives with darkness may we change to light may we receive the promised blessings may this be time of blessings where we're resurrected where our children are resurrected our business our work whatever we do may it all be risen may we all receive these blessings and pass them to our children and now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the great love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit from this time forth, the resurrection of Christ. By the mystery of Christ, this resurrection becomes mine. Those who obey this word and live by this word to become witnesses in all things, witnesses of blessings, may they, their families, their children and the churches that they serve and the workplace, their business, on Korea. May you be with them now and forevermore. In the Lord's name I bless. Amen.